Deo Volente Farm Stallion roster includes some of the top pacing stallions in North America, including Perfect Sting, a breeder's crown champion at both two and three, making him the first male pacer to accomplish this since 1998, the only undefeated two-year-old to win the breeder's crown and never finished off the board in his 26 lifetime right, starts. Fine, drawing clear. It's a perfect breeder's crown for Perfect Sting. And Lazarus N., named New Zealand Horse of the Year twice, as well as three-, four-, and five-year-old Pacer of the Year. He was the Australian Grand Circuit champion for two years and posted 37 wins in his 51 career starts. Lazarus ends the heir apparent to the great Better's Delight. And Tiger Tara, get Nasser on the phone. He is in another orbit. Lazarus does it again. Deo Volente Farms Premium Breeding Farm and Syndicate Management in Flemington, New Jersey. Sell with the best. Harrisburg. Five of the last six horses of the year selling as yearlings were sold at Harrisburg. Last year's yearling sale was an all-time record breaker. Find your champion. November 6th through the 10th. Hello everyone, I'm Heather Vitale for Harness Racing Update and welcome to this edition of Choose in Training sponsored by Dio Valente Farm and the Standard Bread Horse Sales Company. Like most trainers, Noel Daly has experienced highs and lows on this roller coaster we call harness racing. And looking back at 2022, it was one sensational ride for the Daly Stable. So strap in and hold on as we get ready to tell you about the upcoming young talent that will have racing fans screaming for more as we talk to Noel in this edition of Twos in Training. No, when I saw you at the Harrisburg sale and you were getting ready to leave and I'm like, wait a minute, wait, don't go anywhere, where are you going? And you're like, I gotta get out of here before I spend any more money, <laughs> right? So now I know, looking at the two-year-olds that we're gonna talk about today, um, you can see that the vibe is definitely different from the two-year-olds that we talked about last year because last year, I think most of the two-year-olds were like in the 50 grand range. This year, a lot different. So coming off a $4 million season and you go to the sales in the fall, um, the mentality, how is that different? And you know, what are the owners saying to you? Are you going in with thinking, yeah, I'm spending more money? Yeah, no, well, we end up with a lot more, you know, uh, until uh, last year, I think we had one six-figure yearling. And um, and this year I think we had I don't know seven or eight, and uh, some of them were two or three hundred thousand dollar yearlings, which we've never had before. So a different group. That doesn't mean they're going to be the good ones, but um, it was nice to have. And we end up with more. I was hoping to have twenty. We end up with, by the time we had homebreds, we end up with like thirty-four, uh, which is a lot for us. So no, it's been fun, but it's a little different having that many. It's been a long time since I've had that many babies, you know. So. Is that the owner's choice? Is that your choice? Yeah, it, you know, we had a, you have a good run and, you know, it's funny, like uh, until uh, Pebble Beach was the only pacing colt we bought that year and um, like the last decade we've had oh, way more trotters than pacers just because you have a little bit of a run with trotters, we end up with trotters. So um, then we got him and then this year I'm probably, uh, I'd say out of the 35, they're, they're pretty 50-50. They might, might be 60-40, but they're a lot more paces than there have been in the last few years, anyhow. So let's touch on your two Dan Patch Award winners before we get into the two-year-olds. First of all, Pebble Beach, oh my goodness, three-year-old pacing Colts of the Year, won the North America Cup, the Breeders' Crown. You know, how do you put into words how much fun that was last year? Yeah, well, he was all, he's sort of a favorite horse of ours, too, because he's a very cool horse. Uh, we sort of knew last year, you never know 
you know, how good they're going to be. But I remember, again, we hadn't had a, really a pacing colt for many years. Uh, so I told the owners all along the way, I said, I, you know, I, I will be shocked if he's not a 51 or a 52 horse. I said whether it could be a 48 horse. And he ended up being a 48 two-year-old. And then he, he had little, uh, you know, he, he won the North American early in the year. Then he went through a stage there and in Kentucky where he, he got beaten a few times. He, you know, he was second each time, but he wasn't really finishing it off. Uh, he couldn't be on Lasix. I could never catch him bleeding. Uh, but when I went to um, the Breeders' Crown there with him, um, he was night and day different. Uh, I originally went up there thinking I could be second or third, that's what I'm aiming for. And after the first week when he won his division, I thought, they're going to have to be pretty good to beat him, you know, because I was very confident the way he went, and then he was very good. I don't think the other horse was quite on his game on, in the final, but, uh, you know, that would have had to be very good to beat him. He was, he was great there. And now the other thing, we just want to give an update. Of course, he's standing stud at Diamond Creek Farm. Also, just a neat feeling to have a horse that you trained go to stud. And he was such a, he's such a, yeah, he was probably the most perfect yearling I've ever bought. He wasn't, you know, people say he's on the smaller side, but he ended up being 15 too. But he was the most correct horse I've ever bought. I mean, dead square. So I think with his speed, like he was a 48 two-year-old, and just the looks, the way he stood in that, and his attitude, he was a very cool horse to have. Um, you know, I think he'll do a really good job there. I hope he gets a good enough shot. Uh, we end up choosing Kentucky, because uh, the Kentucky program, being that he's actually going to stand there, you know, they get a 50% bonus if the mare's there and the stud's there. So, you know, instead of racing $400,000 finals, you're racing for $600,000 finals. So I hope he gets a shot with some decent mares because I think he'll do the job, you know. Definitely. So volume eight is still in your barn. Uh, we want to tell everybody that last year, actually, that was one of our two-year-olds that we talked about was volume eight. But I didn't realize, so after we did the interview, did he get hurt in the field or something? Yeah, well, he didn't start, you know, I started him, he, he only got to qualify once, and that was like late, mid to late July, because uh, it, it would always be nice. I, mean, I didn't know he was as good as he turned out to be, but um, in about April, uh, he'd put him in the paddock, went to bring him in, and he had sliced uh, the hind tendon, the front part of the, you know, the, it would like, be like a shin to us. But he, he uh, cut it in half. I don't know what he had done. Um, so, you know, the vet's sort of 50-50 whether he'd make it back. Um, we took him over to Jen Smith, and she was a, a bit more upbeat about it. And she did a good job with him, but we lost a lot of time with him. I sort of rushed him to get him ready at the Meadowlands there. He qualified, and he came out. I think he came out from his fifth, his first start, and then he won. And then I took him out to Delaware, Ohio, and he won again. And, you know, away he went from there. But um, I didn't think he was as good as he turned out to be. But, you know, he's, uh, no, he's done, a, done a good job, that horse. So what's his update? We also want to mention that, you know, $70,000 yearling purchase. You know, and here it ends up being volume eight. And you loved his video. There's all... All kinds of great gems, so make sure you go back to Noel's last year, twos in training, and watch that too. But what is his update now? What's he doing? And I know you got to be looking forward to this season. Yeah, no, also, you know, it's the first time we've been able to have one and treat him like he's the best one there. And so, obviously, the Hambo's our major aim. So I'm just, he's eligible to everything, but I'm, uh, I'm trying to take it as easy. He's only been in 25. We're, um, he's a type of horse that would come to hand very quickly you know it was funny Brett was jogging with me the other day he said it looks like he could race next week I said yeah well I don't want that so um, we will just he won't probably start till June um, I just want to you know when he's getting closer there I'll backdate him from the Hambo being his fifth or sixth start and sort of backdate him you know if, if everything works out but you know I've got to treat him like he's the best because he was the best at the end of it there and, um, you know, he's grown a little bit. He's not the biggest fella in the world, but he's a very athletic fella. Speaking of trotters, we're going to head into our two-year-olds, and we're going to start with the trotting fillies. We've got Miss Isla. Now, she's a Walner uh, out of Southwind Venus, sold as a Vestiva Blue Chip, $275,000 at Lexington. Uh, one of the things we talked about with her, you said she's extremely smart, right? Yeah, I'd only have... Um 
she was probably, like I think I had the first year I might have had two Walners, but they were a homebred and a, uh, well two homebreds and they weren't the smartest things on the earth, but um, I've got a few more this year and, and she's, for trotting filly, touch wood, she's just very intelligent, she's very easy to do anything with, she's got a great gait. Um, but she's also very easy to be around and she's very manageable, you know, she's, she knows what she's doing out there. And when you saw her at the sale, it was like, I have to have her? Or? Yeah, no, well that was, you know, um, this first year I've had any uh, yearlings for uh, Ken Jacobs, but uh, Ken picks them himself. He does a lot of his own homework. It just so happens that uh, my guy who does the videos, that Marty loved her too, but she was she was his pick. He, the Ken's picked her out, and um, I just went along and I said, "Yeah, well, I like her, and we like the video and everything." Um, and then you never know. He just you know he went ahead and bought her. You never know what he's going to do, what he's going to go to. But he wanted to have that one. That was the one he wanted, and so we got her. So that was good. And I, I say so far, I love her. So we'll see. Another Walner filly is a buy around, and um, she is out of On Your Tab. This is actually a homebred of Fred Hertrix, right? And do you own part of her? Yeah, now I did a deal with them. I liked her. She had a, it was a bit funny at the sale. We'd, we'd liked her, but she sort of was a little uneven behind, a little high on the hip. And so I didn't end up buying her, and uh, I think she was bid in at like uh, 65 or 70. Uh, they bought her back, so I actually called them. Uh, I'd done a deal with them uh, a couple of years previously with a colt, so I'd called them and I said, what have you done with that filly, because I actually liked her. Anyhow, we've ended up doing a deal with her, and um, same deal, she's very nice, very nice. She's a little, little more high strung on the track than the other filly, but got a ton of go, and you know, she, she throws her head all over the place, but she does nothing but trot, so you know, fingers crossed with that one too. All right, then there's Paulina Hanover, who is a Father Patrick, out of personal style, who is a great race mare, won the Hamiltonian Oaks, and actually she's been really successful in the brood broodmare shed too. Hasn't thrown a killer, but everything's been good. We actually had Palermo, uh, the, so we just sold Palermo. That was the, uh, the full sister tour. Uh, very similar, uh, this one, we went to the sale. This one, uh, yeah, everything about it was very similar to the other one. Um, this one might even be a fraction smarter than um, Palermo, but because uh, the Father Patrick fillies can, yeah, they can be handfuls, but she's uh, no, a nice filly, she's very much like her sister, so if her sister end up making a quarter of a million for her, if she can do the same thing, that'd be nice. Bees and Bees is another Father Patrick out of Andover, Ms. Brenda, a Harrisburg purchase. 100,000, yeah. She um, didn't look anything like any of the other Father Patricks I've had. Uh, a big filly, um, but um, my man Marty, he, he loved her at, uh, at the sale. We went there and she was actually uh, also from the uh, Keys consignment where we bought volume eight um, and been nothing but good since day one. Um, can be a little headstrong. Um, she seems to have settled down a bit now, but you know, she lets you know out there some days she wants to take off on you or she'll have a bit of a buck at you. But beautiful going thing, and um, yeah, I like her a lot. I like her a lot. We'll switch to the boys now, and another Father Patrick, and this is Lightning Tamer out of Chase and Clouds Away from Lexington, sixty thousand dollars. Yeah, um, well, he was sort of my favourite one of all the ones that I thought I could afford a piece of. Um, he was probably my favourite colt there, uh, and he's. You know, a little worried about Father Patrick Colts rather than the Phillies. I'd had a bit of luck with the Phillies, but uh, he's pretty smart. Another one he goes without a head check. He, the Father Patrick's would be a little funny with their heads. We tried a few different things on him and then just said to hell with it, took everything off. Um, and he's he's great like that, you know. I don't know if he's a superstar, but he's uh, he's a dual eligible, um, very likable horse and uh, got a great way of going, you know. So uh, fingers crossed with him. All right, another trotting boy. We've got Crypto Cash, International Money is the Sire, out of Kidman Hall. Now, this is her 12th foal I saw. And actually, though, uh, uh, this is a half-brother to Big Rich, who won $600,000. Yeah, but, and then there's been nothing else out of the mare. It was one of those deals. It was, a, again, it was a Marty Pickett. He's a big, good-looking fella. Uh, but the mare, you know, I think this fella's the 11th or 12th, 12th, you said? Yeah. And, um... There'd only been one that had really made a face like a horse, and the rest of them hadn't been much good. 
But Marty said he didn't like the rest of them. And, he, and this fella, he does nothing but try it. He's he's big, good going fella. Uh, we never had an international money before, but you know, there's like five of us in him. He sort of took a shot with him, and I like him. Because he went for thirty-five thousand dollars, <laughs> so that was kind of to, that's around what you thought the price was going to be. Yeah, you know that the man. Let's just say you get people to drop off after a mare has seven or eight foals, you know, and as I said, there'd only been one. Uh, good out of her, but he was a um, beautiful looking horse, big, big, strong fellow, and a very athletic horse, so that was a fair price. So now let's check out Sig Sawyer, a muscle hill out of Sig Wig. This is a first foal. Yeah, and from the family of you know, some of Jimmy Campbell's ones there, Broadway Donner and that. Uh, the mare, I think, she's a Donato mare, only made like 30 odd, but plenty of family. I think she's got a sister there who's the mother of back of the neck, and then, you know, then. A few of the speedy ones from Jimmy Campbell's family are the next ones back. Uh, I've never been able to buy a, uh, a Muscle Hill uh, that actually had everything. You know, usually I'm going, they either have a good, a good video, no pedigree, they stand like ducks. We sort of had to pick one of them. It was the first time I could buy a Muscle Hill, uh, had the money behind us to um, buy one who had everything we, we wanted, you know. Um, Big strong fella, and if, if he's if he's half as good as he thinks he is, we're going to be in good shape because he's a bit of a handful, um, but a, a beautiful going horse. Okay, we are switching gates, and we're going to check out the pacing fillies now. Uh, first up is Captain Crunch Philly, and this is actually his debut season. This is not to be toyed with. Uh, very big filly, uh, actually. Uh, James from Country Acres, he'd picked her out. Um, it's funny, I, I'd actually trained the mother, who was just fair, uh, All-American Memoir, I believe, but she was, had a great family. And um, this filly was tall, uh, now she's huge, but good going filly. Um, you know, and you got a lot of go. Doesn't want to be in the front end, but we'll follow all day, whatever we want to do. Yeah, All-American Memoir actually had a couple really nice foals, beach memories and better memories. Um, they both made almost a million dollars. And I think James might have owned beach memories, so that's why this one. Um, but, you know, she's, it's funny, I have two Captain Crunch fillies. Um, I like the other one too, but the other one's just a little behind. She had a few little issues there. But one's a little filly and then this one's huge. You know, she's a big, big, tall filly. You can't even see over her. I can't see over her, so... But good going, you know. So. Miraculous Dio, she's a stay hungry out of worldly beauty, okay? So, like, if you even know a little tiny bit about harness racing, you've heard of world, worldly beauty, the world champion. Um, th this is her 14th foal, though. So um, what do you think about this one? Well, same deal. I love her. Um, I, I did, um, doesn't stand that correct, uh, but t twice the size of a mother. Uh, but Dia Valente, the mother had gotten old, Dia Valente wanted to keep them out, they didn't put her in the sale. Um, and then I did a deal with them to uh, Lisa while, while she races. Um, beautiful bodied mare and everything, uh, the only thing she's, as I say, she's not the most correct from the, from the knees down, but got, got a lot of go, I really, really like her. So. Um, so that's great. Yeah, Dio Valente. I didn't realize that they had a worldly beauty there. I'm going to have to go over and see her because yeah. that's definitely a selfie moment right there. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that, they've, they've had her. I think they raced her. I don't know whether they raised her or they might have bought her, but they, they raced her. I remember when Pat Lachance had her as a two-year-old. Um, <clears throat> but she was a great, great little filly. Um, and she's been a decent brood mare. Had some decent ones. But uh, this one, the Stay Hungry, had a good year, first year. So, um, yeah, nothing not to like about this filly. So we're going to wrap up our two-year-olds with a couple of Captain Treacherous Colts. First of all, Hurricane J. This was uh, the doozy, for lack of a better word. Uh, $310,000 Harrisburg purchase. We do want to mention that um, he was sold as Twin Bee Predator, and this is actually a first foal for Paisley Hanover. Yeah, beautiful colt, and again, this is... Uh, Ken Jacobs told me he'd buy me two, he'd buy me a trotter and he'd buy me it. So he picked him out and I went and looked at him. He's gorgeous, he's a really good type. So I, and I called him back and I just said, yeah, oh, I love him. I said, did someone look at him for you? And he said, no, no, I just picked him. He does a lot of time, he spends a lot of time in the videos and whatever. Uh, but he'd picked him out and uh, vetted him out. Um, so wasn't sure how much he would 
go for, wasn't sure what Ken would go to, so I just had him on the phone and he just kept going. So, you know, it's a, that's the most I've ever spent on one, but, uh, you know, it's not the most Ken's ever spent on one, but it's the most I've ever, yeah. Spend on one side. No, it's yeah. not. We've had him at the sale, like at Lexington before, with the sale topper, yeah. and uh, he is a very vibrant and enthusiastic owner and loves bidding. So that sort of makes your job easy. Not only did he pick this one out, but he's just on the phone with you and you're raising your hand. Yeah, no, that's what he said. It's, it's if they're no good, that's his mistakes, you know. And he's, uh, I like this horse, but he's always, he's a little, uh, he's scared of tractors and he's a little bit of an airhead. He's all over the place. Uh, but when he focuses, he's got very quick speed. He just he's been we've been babying him a little bit, and it's usually I'm fighting with the owners to get them to gel one if I think they're a little. Um, in this case, um, he, he just said to me, well, "Why don't you just geld him?" I, I don't want to geld him because eh, because I do think there's something there. So he said, "Pretend he was take just take a zero off. Pretend he was 31 or 32 instead of 300." I said, Ugh. I said if he was bad, I'd, uh, I think I said, but he, he does, he has very quick speed. He's just a little bit of an airhead around the place, you know, so I, I think he'll get it. So I was quite happy with him there this morning, but he's still, you know, he's just a little behind just because he hasn't, he hasn't focused properly yet. So. Okay, all right. Um, that's very funny because usually, right, the tables have turned. It's usually the owner saying, don't geld, don't wow. geld, and the trainer's like, cut him. Yeah. You know, we need focus. So uh, he's still a stud, so we're yeah. holding out, right? Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm protecting him at the moment. Ken would, Ken would have him a gelding, so we'll just, we'll just see how we go. You know, if he, if he doesn't turn the corner there in the next few weeks, then we'll get him, to, you know, we'll get him gelded. But right now, he's, uh, he's a beautiful horse. He's not overly big, but he's a very... Very, uh, very compact horse. All right, and our final two-year-old to talk about is Captain Albano, one of my all-time favorite wrestlers. Uh, you know what a great name, uh, Captain Treacherous Colt out of Angelou. Yeah, always just been very professional, very quick. So um, don't know if he's as good as Pebble Beach, but he sort of gives you that. He's got a good vibe about him. Um, he's sort of always been, you know, everything was easy to him. So you know. We'll, Keep our fingers crossed and see where we're at there. You know, I'm never very forward with them, so I don't really know till I get them there. Um, but, but it, you know, he's, he gives you, there's a lot to like there. We'll see with a little, um, just want to throw in a wrestling phrase in here. We'll see if he's going to put the smack down on his competition this year. Let's hope, let's hope. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, you take the horses out in sets. We've had sets of four or five today. You know, how do you decide who goes on front? How important is confidence at this stage? Yeah, well, we try and switch them around. Um, give them, you know, give them a shot. You don't want to have the same one on the front. You know, it gets a little hard early in the piece when the smart ones, you know, they're the, <laughs> they end up being in front all the time. Well, we, we try and switch it around a bit. And then once you get to this stage, you get to know a few of them. Like some of them don't want to be there. Like not to be, she just doesn't want to be on the front, but she'll do everything. Um, yeah, and then we just work it out from there, you know, just try and give them all a, a different uh, a, a different view of things, you know, see where we can get them to sit in a hole, get them to come from last, to, you know, just swap them around. We go the wrong way first trip, we go the right way the second trip. So, you know, we don't have, a, we're not set up with a, uh, a strip uh, good enough to train during the winter here, so... Um, you know, when we get that to uh, our strip, will be set up for the summer. Get to go on there, give them a bit of speed, speed work. So. Right. Okay. Well, just to tie up this interview, you know, I've obviously been watching your career my whole life, you know, and um, I so enjoy seeing you have so much success, you know, especially like last year. But it's funny, like. Everybody in this business, you know, it's like you're at the highest of highs and then your heart is broken, you know. But it is not just a way of life, but it's a passion. So, you know, for somebody that like you who has just been in the peaks and the valleys, what kind of mantra or life advice, you know, do you keep in mind or can you give to people who might be going through something? Yeah, well, it's just, you know, it's we're lucky enough to do some, make a, yeah, just making a living out of doing something that you like to do is a, a big head start. So, um, <clears throat> you know, a lot of good trainers out there don't get the opportunity. If you get the opportunity with a, you know, it's not always the money, but it's nice to have money behind you. Like, you know, since I come back three years ago, I've had three different divisional champs. I think Anoka was 35, Volume 8 was 70, Pebble Beach was 85. So it can be done. 
you know, this year I've got, as I say, I've got six or seven of them there in the six-figure range. So, you know, hopefully for the people who put the money forward that they can step up too. But it's nice to know they can come from everywhere. You know, when you look at Jimmy Campbell, I think Jimmy Campbell last year started, he had 15 or 16 horses. You know, he ended up being the trainer of the year. Like, <laughs> no one had a better year than him. So, you know, as you say, things fluctuate in this game. It's just, uh, you've just got to have a few... Um, faithful, reliable people behind you. And I've got a you know a bunch of guys that have been with me forever, and then we've got new ones along the way. So, you know, it's 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 fun. It's fun to have the the numbers and the quality to to, to be competitive there. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, love seeing you last year in the winner's circle with your champions. So much fun, and I'm so looking forward to this year. And I know you are too. Oh yeah, no, yeah. Hopefully, we have half as good a year as last year. I'd be very happy with it. You know, I was traveling around Pebble Beach, and then Volume Eight coming along at the end of it, it was. Uh, no, a lot of fun for us. So. All right. Well, thank you, Noel, for having us in your barn. I really appreciate it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for watching, and a very special thanks to our sponsors, Dio Valente Farm and the Standard Bread Horse Sales Company. And don't forget to subscribe to our free newsletter at harnessracingupdate.com. I'm Heather Vitale for HRU.